so excited to be here today because I think you're going to be excited about what you see. It's an awesome program. There's so much you can do with it. So I'm going to just dive right into it and tell you about Paltoon. And this is so true. And I, yes, I'm going to use the word awesome a lot because to me, this program is awesome. It allows me to do so much cool things for my classroom. So I'm hoping you'll feel the same way. And you're going to learn the value of using Paltoon as an instructional tool. You're going to get some ideas, I mean, concrete ways you could go back to your classroom tomorrow and use Paltoon. And then you're going to learn just how quick and easy you can create your very own Paltoons because you don't need to be a tech wizard. So this is just a little bit of background. You've already heard about me. Um, I am going to pull back the curtain, as we say, so to speak, and just um, say hi in person just for a moment. Um, I used to be the instructional technology coordinator and teach, but I work for a very small rural school district in the state of Virginia in the United States, and uh, we wear many hats. And this year, life has thrown me a little bit of a curveball because I'm back in the classroom full time as a CTE teacher, career and technology education. So I'm working with grades 8 through 12. I'm teaching full time. I'm still helping teachers on the side, um, but I'm really using things in the classroom myself that I've been showing teachers how to use for the past few years. So it is a big change for me after 20 and a half years of not being a full time teacher, but it's kind of cool because all this stuff that I um, have been preaching to other teachers, I now get to practice myself. So um, I'm going to say bye again and pull the curtain back. So we're going to go back to our presentation. All right. Just so you had a little bit more, you know the face behind the voice. All right. So you might say if you're not familiar with it, what is Paltoon? And this is a direct quote, but it is so true. It is the most user friendly and most intuitive animation software. And that's the key. It's animation software. You're creating animated videos. Kids love these. They just love them. And you don't have to be a tech guy. You don't have to be a tech girl. You don't have to be a graphic designer and be able to draw. You don't need a camera. You don't need expensive equipment. You need a computer with an internet connection and an idea. That's all you need. And most of us teachers, you know, we have lots of ideas. We just need cool tools to implement them. So, so why do you want to do this? Let's think about our kids nowadays, and this is particularly true in the United States um, and uh, maybe other countries it's not quite as true, but in the United States, our kids are glued to YouTube, they're glued to video games, they are all about video. That is their learning environment. That's the environment they feel most comfortable in. So if you're using video in your classroom, it's more authentic to them. It's what they're used to. And research backs it up. I mean, this isn't just, oh, we want our kids to have fun. Research backs it up. Students learn better when content is presented in video. They have better memory retention. They understand the content better. And they're more engaged in the lesson. They're more motivated. And it's fun. And it's not just fun for the kids. As a teacher, using video in the classroom and watching my kids respond to that video and the content far more than they respond to me up there in front of the class lecturing, it makes my class more fun. And, you know, teaching should be fun. As teachers, we need to have fun in the classroom, too. It's not just about the kids having fun. So I'm going to show you five ideas. And I think these ideas are things that any teacher, no matter what the subject is, can use. And the activity one is a bell ringer. Activity two, using centers whole class instruction, homework helpers, and one of my favorite things, sub plans. All right, so bell ringer. You might not call it a bell ringer. Some teachers call it a daily drill. Some teachers call it the opening activity, attention getter. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's those first five minutes of class. You're trying to get the kids settled. You've got to take attendance, paperwork, whatever, and you need those kids engaged doing something that's content related at the beginning. So this is a great way to do it. You can introduce a new vocabulary word. You could give the students a quick problems to solve. You heard earlier I was a math teacher. Math, I'm very passionate about math and technology both. I love to do this and give them a little problem like this to solve. You could review what they learned yesterday and ask them a question about it. 
Maybe you're getting ready to start a new unit. Great way to introduce the next topic. And I have a couple of examples and I'm going to show you them and look at a couple of bell ringers. You can give these assignments at the beginning of class. The students have an activity to do, and it's much more engaging than just writing on the board a problem or an assignment for them to do. It kind of gets them going and gets them excited about the class just from the very first moment they walk in the door. So activity two, centers. If you're not familiar with what we call centers, and this is a term um, that's very familiar with a United States teacher and possibly others, but we have areas in the classroom and they're self-contained areas. And students are engaging independent and self-directed learning activities. And typically, you see them a lot in elementary classrooms where you have a group over here doing one thing and a group over here maybe working with the teacher and a group over here sitting at their desks doing another activity. But what we have found is that centers work for all grade levels. And high school kids, they're still kids. They're teenagers, but they're still kids, and they're still learning how to learn in a lot of ways. And centers help them. Um, that ability to be independent and self-directed and work at your own pace is a really great thing to develop in kids. And so what we have found is that centers in all grades, K through 12, work really well. And it's a way of presenting the content. Now, you could say to them, go to this website and read the website and fill out this worksheet or take notes on it. And they can do that. Or you can create your own video. Now, I've created a very simple video and I'm going to explain to you in just a few minutes how you can really pump it up and make this video even more awesome than it already is. But I want to demonstrate what I have. and. I will apologize to any science teachers. This is a science video, and that's kind of not my field, but I was trying to cover a wide variety of subject areas. So if I did not uh, do the content right, please forgive me. Um, science is just not my thing.
Okay, so that was a way that you could use it in the center. You might give the students a worksheet or something to complete or ask them to take notes as they learn about the water cycle. One of the advantages to doing a center with a video like this, the students can replay it as needed. Okay, so they can say, okay, well, I didn't quite get that. Let me go back and review that again. Let me see that again and make sure I got that right. Again, you're helping the students learn to take responsibility for their learning, helping them develop those learning skills. I need good notes. I didn't quite get everything, so I need to go back and watch that video again to get my notes. Um, and that is something that I struggle with in my classroom. I'm currently teaching um, InfoTech Fundamentals. And the kids just don't understand. They need to be taking detailed notes. They had their first test yesterday. And for many of them, it was a big shock because they had not been taking detailed notes. And they failed the test because they didn't have the notes to study. The, a lot of them didn't think they needed to study because they've been able to coast. Um, and this course is a very tough industry certification course. And, you know, it's... You know, our kids sometimes need to be taught how to learn, how to take those notes, how to be a good student as far as the student's learning skills. All right. Whole class instruction. Um, I get tired of being in the front of my class and being on the stage, so to speak, and being the one doing the talking and presenting and I'm sure my students get tired of seeing and hearing me too. So you can create a Powtoon video to teach whole class instruction. Now, what I've done is I've taken the same water cycle video, again, apologizes if there's any errors in it, and I have changed it a little bit to make it as classroom instruction. Now, I have to explain something here, um, and this is something for me personally. There are two ways you could do this presentation, and I'm going to show you the way that works in my classroom, and I'm going to tell you why I do it that way. But when I show you how to create a Powtoon at the end, I'm going to show you a way that probably most of you would prefer to do it unless you have a situation like mine. So when you save a Powtoon, you can do it as a movie, which you've already seen, or you can do it more in the format of a slide show. You still get all the animations, but you can advance each scene with a click, which is great for most classrooms. But my computer lab, where the projector was, I just got this room this year, and the previous person, where they had the projection screen and the projector and the computer station, didn't work the way I needed it to work. But money being what it is, it, I just couldn't ask them to move it. I figured I could make it work. Unfortunately, um, due to a, um, a health issue, we shall say, I can't walk back and forth across the classroom very fast. And my computer station is on one end of the classroom, and where I need to be to talk to my students is kind of towards the other side. So walking back and forth to click to advance the slides does not work for me. So I had a workaround for that, and Powtoon is great. It allowed me to do that. And you'll notice when you watch this video, you're going to see some pauses. And that is time for me as the teacher to discuss with the students, to let them answer, to let them brainstorm, to have that classroom interaction that is so critical. Um, you don't just want them sitting in front of a computer all day. You want to interact with them. They need that. So that's how I did my video. And you're going to see that in here, but I wanted to explain why there's those long times. I don't have the ability right now to walk back and forth as much as I normally would. That will change in the spring. So let's try seeing the same presentation that I can now convert very easily to classroom.
So you can see I made a few changes. I put in another character that was at the beginning, the teacher, and I had him asking the questions. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but I wanted to just show you the difference between a center activity and how you could take that same activity and then very quickly, easily convert it to a classroom activity. Same content, but different approach. And again, my lag times are because of my inability to run across the room and press the forward button on the slideshow. But for most of you, and I'll show you how easy it is, it's just a click of one little button to change that. It's really easier um, to probably do it as more of a slideshow. And again, super easy. All right, homework helpers. Um, former math teacher, one of the biggest things you'd hear students come in the next day. I tried to do my homework, but I couldn't remember what we did in class. So back when I was a math teacher, teachers didn't have classroom web pages. The Internet was still very new, um, really wasn't available to people. And so there wasn't much I could do. I could send home instruction. I could send home descriptions. But what could I really do? Well, with Paltoon, it's so easy to create a homework helper, a little mini video tutorial that you can post on your class page and the students can click on it if they get home and they get stuck. Not only the students, but I have had so many parents over the years say, well, I can't help my kid. I was horrible in math or I can't help my kid. This new math, I don't get it or I don't remember doing this when I was a student, you know, how many years ago. So this is a great way that you can make these little tutorials and you can help your students When there are no common denominators, to find the least common denominator, you just multiply the denominators of the two fractions together. In this case, 3 times 5, and we get 15. So the denominators of our equivalent fractions will be 15. Remember the rule of 1. 5 over 5 and 3 over 3 are equal to 1. We're multiplying 1 third by 1, so it's an equivalent fraction. It just looks different, but the value is the same. Two-fifths times three over three, same thing, equivalent fraction. Remember, you only add the numerators, not the denominators. That's why we got a common denominator. What I did is a voiceover. Um, it's very easy. Powtoon makes it super easy to actually record. So when you're looked at that center and you think, okay, but my students don't have good reading skills, they would struggle with that center on their own. Well, you can do a voiceover. You can record it, not just have the words on the screen, but you can record it. So you can make it a full body presentation. You've got the background music, you've got the verbal instructions, you've got the written information, and it's the whole package. It is the just incredibly easy.